I'm Melanie King and this is Louise Beer and we were, as Heather said, um, graduating from the MA Art and Science three years ago, so that was us down there. Um, <laughs> and we found some very interesting correlations with our work when we run the course. Um, so we're just going to talk a bit about our individual work first, um, just to show you where the connections kind of lie. Hi everybody. Um, so I'm just going to say a little bit about my practice. Um, during the MA, I made installations out of light and dark spaces. These installations were so dark that they lost any reference to the well, visual reference to their physical form. Each omniscient light sculpture suggested something ambiguous that was completely unsympathetic to humanity. Um, I took photographs of these works that I make into reflective sculptural pieces that I mount on walls. Um, now I work in smaller spaces, bringing the usually enormous astronomical objects into um, insignificant spaces often viewed through a peephole. Um, I'm fascinated by our um, infancy of knowledge about our very about the very nature of our reality. And I'm also interested in uh, light and astronomy and understanding how humanity understands existence. Um, so at the moment I'm currently, I just started an MPhil at the Royal College and I'm looking at the complex relationship with celestial objects and how celestial light can affect photosensitive material. Um, and in recent work I've been applying theories of semiology such as the SPACES theory of the index onto various events in the history of astronomy, so things like 19th century photographers such as Andrew Ainsley Common where light directly affected, well in Andrew Ainsley Common's um, research, light directly affected photosensitive material. Um, and in, those, in my pieces, I'm looking at directly capturing that light from the celestial objects. But I'm also thinking about indexicality in um, different ways. So I recently wrote a paper about the indexicality of the discovery of gravitational waves. Um, and that's a new kind of thing that I'm thinking about, like how can we grasp things that are invisible and how do scientists make these truth claims. So I'm very much at the beginning of my research but I'm interested um, in taking that further over the course of my PhD. Um, so yeah, these are just some examples like you've seen a solar graph, you've seen a lift print of the moon, you've seen um, a daguerreotype of Mercury planet, and this is the cyanotype taken to James Terrell's skyscape in Kyoto. And this is the most recent piece that I've made. I got some meteorites and I crushed them up into at Imperial College London into a fine powder, and I put them into an etching ink. So the image that you see is a photograph of the original meteorite, and it's now been crushed and made into a link, if that makes sense. Um, so leading on to our projects, um, this is our first foray when we just first graduated. <laughs> so would you like to carry on from there? Okay. Um, when we left university, well, left our masters just after the MA degree show, um, I was a bit frustrated that it was quite difficult to make installation work, which I now understand after working at universities. Um, but we wanted to create immersive environments that had links with astronomy and sort of rejected the idea of a white space exhibition. So we formed a collective called Spaces Eggs. <laughs> 
um, with two other people from the MA, Lauren Franklin and Marta Santuccio. We had our first exhibition in Power Lunches in Dulcet in 2013, just a couple of months after we graduated. Um, we filled this space with lots of installation work, wall-mounted work, soundscapes, light installations, um, Candy planet, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to create a real sort of out of this world experience, I guess. We also made scenes as a legacy of the exhibition, which we continue to do for every exhibition that we make now. Um, and we made t shirts, which we thought would make us millions of pounds, but they didn't. Come on, <laughs> And um, so after uh, Lauren Franklin moved away and Marta Santicio moved away, we thought it was time to reevaluate and think about a new way of moving forward. So we found this um, connection within our work, which was light, and we were looking um, at different places to exhibit. And we found, um, well, you had an exhibition in a church, and that led on to us thinking about how to show um, work in churches about astronomy and what kind of ideas those doing that brings into view, like what is the understanding of light in religion, in um, in science and in astronomy, and how do those kind of seemingly disparate ideas or fields come together? And um, so it's very open. We don't really have, um, well, we do have viewpoints, but we don't enforce them. <laughs> um, and we ask artists to come and work with us and share their kind of understanding of what that might be. So we're just going to show you um, a video of our launch. Um, we wrote a big proposal with the Church's Conservation Trust about um, exhibiting an art artist's interpretation of a star in several different churches in the UK. Um, that would form a constellation from above that almost got through, but not quite. Um, so from then on, we began looking for other church spaces that we could use to exhibit in. And we came across the St. John and Beth and Brain Church, where we had an exhibition um, about just over a year ago, upstairs in the belfry. And we came across our very own crypt after that. And the church is really interesting as well in terms of what we're thinking about because it was designed by Sir John Stone um, and obviously he was really interested in light and how light works in architecture and he was also really inspired by Egyptians and Egyptian buildings and how light was used there. So there's some very interesting like links going back. Um, but yeah, as Louise said, we now have a studio in a crypt space in St John and Bethlehem Green. And we are there with quite a few different types of organisations. Um, there's psychotherapists, there's um, um, an English school, um, different types of holistic therapy. And then there's us with this really long, we think, rocket shapes. <laughs> um, crypt space and we also are really considering our background of space space interested in using it as a dark space for installations and also different types of exhibitions and really giving people um, different experiences so this is one of our very recent shows which was a bring your own beamer like bring your own projector in our space and this is an installation by Balint Oligo who made um, photosensitive emulsion inside of a glass um, bowl and then an old glass bowl, sorry, and then on the outside you can kind of see that it's um, the image of the earth and this rotates slowly. Um, and we also had a recent show, um, David Marin Encounters, who is a paramedic and um, artist um, curated by GV Arts at Lumen Studios. Um, 
and that was diff that by showing the work in the crypts, it was a completely different use of the space, and it really brought up some interesting questions. And then um, recently, we also had a show which was all about sound because our space is very resonant. So. Um, we had an exhibition um, of lots of different performances as well, which is all about delay and how delay works in astronomy and how um, different artists use delay, the concept of delay in their own work. Um, we also co-directed another collective called Super Collider, which is a um, it's more about getting science across to people through different events. So we curate exhibitions in a slightly different way, and it's not all about astronomy. Um, <laughs> we curate talks at Second Home. Um, we go on field trips to places like Kilda Observatory, which I think we've got some photos of later. We also do pop-up astronomy, and this was pop-up astronomy clubs now, our first event was the eclipse that didn't come out <laughs> because of the toxic smog. <laughs> um, so we run events at places like the Eggs Hotel, um, Soho House. And that's really kind of important to us, isn't it? Because people often haven't had the experience of um, looking through a telescope before. So this gives people that wouldn't usually have access to astronomy a way of seeing amazing things like Venus and Jupiter and Saturn for the first time. Um, and that's something that we want to continue doing. Yeah, it's sort of a different way of attacking the same question, I guess. This is the um, living photographs talk that we had at Second Home. Um, a month or so ago with one of the art and science graduates, Alice Cisnell. Yeah, Alice makes um, prints on leaves and she does that while they're still alive, which is super amazing. Um, and we made the whole discussion about how you can make photographs, so images, using light on different um, substrates that are still living, basically. And we took about four people to Kilda Observatory last July, um, where we stayed in tents and visited the observatory a couple of times. We also spent quite a lot of time in the James Terrell exhibition doing sound recordings and making lots of strange noises. Um, we did a lot of photography and also I saw a globular cluster for the first time, which was totally amazing. Um, we also went on lots of long walks through the amazing landscape. And again, it was this kind of thing of giving people an experience, um, and particularly being able to look through a telescope on a completely different level this time because you can see things like nebula and quasi clusters. Um, and we've also done workshops. Um, so this is the sun printing workshop um, where you use the cyanotype process and you use the sun to affect photosensitive material and you can get like an impression of a plant or a structure um, just by putting a shadow on the paper. Um, but it was completely amazing experience. <laughs> it was in a, a tiny island in Norway, which was the most beautiful place I think. Yeah, I've ever been anywhere more amazing. <laughs> yeah, and then we also did this is another curatorial project we have, which is um, Ether, and we had an idea of creating, curating a show about the more philosophical aspects of astronomy. So Lumen does deal with philosophy in some way, but Ether is very definitely um, interested in that. And we were particularly inspired to make this show because of the um, overview of that book by Frank White, which is all about the cognitive shift that astronauts have when they see the planet from space for the first time. 
And so we got an artist from UAL, because that was the crime for the space, um, who are already working in um, space and astronomy within their work. So um, we had the exhibition where we showed work, but we also um, did a pop-up astronomy event so people could see um, Jupiter. Oh, Jupiter, I think, was particularly visible on that day. And we had a seminar where we had um, cosmologists from University College London, Donald Kirk and Michelle Lochner, and we had them speaking alongside the artists and they were discussing um, the relationship between cosmology and art, basically, which was really interesting. Yeah, we've recently just had an exhibition in Berlin at the Jarvis Duny Gallery, which is again the ether curation of curational project, um, but this time mainly based around analog photography and sort of deconstructing a photograph in terms of how each artist understands the universe, I guess. So this one on the far what I can't uh, write is um, some recordings of the colours of light throughout the day from sunrise to sunset. And if you think about the etymology of photography, it means light drawing and I I'm, I think by putting this work in the exhibition it's saying what is the definition of a photograph in some way. And we have an exhibition up at the moment at Imperial College London in South Kensington. Um, so we were looking at how artists tackle the invisible things. So you can see here Jane Grasswood, who did her PhD here at Central St Martins. Um, she's drawing a black hole and um, thinking about the accumulation of matter. So she's trying to think about things that are quite intangible through our practice. And all of the different artists in this exhibition are kind of thinking about that in their own way. Um, so this one here is by Susan Eyre, and she's thinking about how to represent dark matter, and that was the subject of her MA at the Royal College. And that was the private view. Um, so this is a very exciting thing. <laughs> Um, we, as Lumen, we also run a residency with someone else called Raymond Hempson and Natasha Sabatini, um, where we take 20 artists away to a tiny mountain village in, in Italy. Um, we stay for two weeks and visit the local observatory, which is quite a has a considerable size telescope for the area that it's in. Um, Monte Cassino, which is a chapel on the mountain, I guess. It's quite a famous one. A lot of people died there in World War II. Um, we also visit local chapels and churches. Oh yeah, this is Monte Cassino. And there's lots of abandoned buildings to explore in the area. This is a, um, we, last year we had a couple of the MA Art and Science students come away with us and this is Marta Pinilla who's just graduating this year. And she has her work down there. <laughs> um, the big origami pieces but this is the work she created on the residency which is a long drawing um, on paper. And this is one of the fathers of the local church talking about his understanding of light. And that's something we want to develop into kind of like a seminar type thing. So astronomers speaking alongside artists and then religious leaders about their understanding of light. Yeah, that, in that church we had an exhibition at the end of the residency as well. So this is a book, Cosmographia, um, which was published in 1456. And this was something we got to look at in Monte Cassino. Um, and as you can see, it's 
looking at how we understood how they understood the universe in those days, which we found absolutely fascinating. And this is um, a piece by Don Lee, who is also graduating from the MA Art and Science um, very soon. And this is a work where he took a pinhole, a photograph with a pinhole every hour for a whole day. So that's why you have the um, ring structure. We have a film about the residency. <coughs> so we're going to end with this film. And um, yeah, that's awesome. And we're also going back to Athena this September, so have a look at our website, Lumen Studios, if you'd like to know any more about it. And we've also got some um, events coming up. Um, next week, we're doing another Bring Your Own Beamer at Star Space in Hackney, and that is Lumen, so we'll be um, showing lots of projections, and the theme is astronomical light. So, yes, any questions? Anybody in this room that doesn't wish that they were there? <laughs> it's such a fabulous film, it just makes people want to be there. So you're running it again this year, this September. Is it still open or have you are you fully yeah. booked? Um, it's not. Well, we haven't gone through all the applications, we're still going through them. But yeah, Is the deadline open. ahead or behind? Yes, I think it's the 28th of May. Yeah, it's the 28th of May. Okay, so if you do want to be there this September, then you need to apply by the 28th of May. Yeah. Two profound questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, how difficult do you find it flipping between like the different kind of collectives and curatorial bodies that you have, uh, given that it's the two of you who are centred to most of the ones that you've been talking about? Like, how do you work out which one would be appropriate for which different setting? And my second question is, um, given that a lot of the talks and a lot of like stuff that I've heard about art science stuff is focused on bio art and like biologically related art science work, how difficult do you find it being um, more physics based and more like uh, sitting on much further on that side of the um, art science thing in terms of finding funding, in terms of finding collaborators, in terms of finding artists who are interested in art and science to work with? To answer your first question, I think we generally find it quite easy to know what goes where. So there are things that seem specifically looming, which are more about um, how humanity understands existence from lots of different perspectives. And I guess we're quite interested in like archaeoastronomy, more type things there. And um, with ether, it's a lot more. Um, wall-based yeah. work and also um, going back to our uh, understanding with Space is Ace when we first started, like also bringing in more kind of experiential um, things that use projections and um, installations and things like that. And to answer your second question, I think because there's a lot of people working separately with astronomy in their art practice. Once you find one person, you're sort of linked to many other people. And we use a lot of people for, a lot of the same people for exhibitions. We sort of have created a pool of people that we work with and always finding new people through those people. So, and through open calls as well. Yeah, like yeah. We're very um, into open calls because it just opens up the possibilities um, yeah. in finding people that we might have never even met before on different sides of the planet. Like with the residency, people yeah. came from New York and Canada and Italy. It was amazing. And yeah, and I think because maybe those things don't exist in great volume, everyone sort of comes to the same centre, especially with the residency. We couldn't find any other residencies sort of based on astronomy and light in the same way. So we hope that everybody who's interested in it finds it in the end <laughs> and comes and then we can make more residencies and international exhibitions with people from all over the world. 
I think one thing just that came across in the images was the fact that you were going to this place in Italy doing this, because you couldn't find the right colour, so it's just made up your own one, which is amazing. And then actually there was, it seemed like there was, so what, what I sometimes find a bit strange with residencies is when there's no engagement with the community that you're being arrested with, and it seems like that's that you are engaging, you're engaging with history, you're engaging with the priests, the community, the people that, that actually that worship in the church. That's so important for residencies because that, that legacy and that relationship is what's going to make it even more powerful. Um, so I just wanted to con congratulate you guys on that because a lot of residencies miss that. So it's, yeah, really good to engage. <laughs> That definitely is a big part of the residency because so we always find Jaya, I find Athena for that reason. Yeah. And the person we collaborate with grew up in Athena, so she knows everybody in the village and we get to know everyone as well. It's really lovely. And they're all interested in what we're doing, they come to the exhibition and um, come to the um, nunnery where we all stay and have a look and the astronomer who had a big telescope in his garden down the road was always around. <laughs> yeah and he's also an artist so we got to see some of his artwork and he got to show some of his work in the exhibition in the church so it was quite collaborative in that way as well. Yeah. Fantastic, well let's leave it there, so the dialogue between artists going into a community, artists and scientists working together. <coughs> It's fantastic to hear what you've been doing for the last three years. You've been busy. Um, keep, keep, keep it up. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um,